Hi, I'm Leanne. I'm a light worker and a mother to three special girls. I strive to continue learning, growing, and to collect new skills. I'm a psychic medium, Reiki master teacher, and a Kashuk record reader and energy healer. I am so excited to share what I've learned and what I'm going to learn and the ups and downs of life. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Welcome to Life of a Lightworker podcast. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the residual effects for for the healer when you're doing a healing, especially when you're doing a healing on someone who has a similar issue to you and what can happen if you don't protect your energy enough or have the right boundaries in place. Uh, To start off today's episode, I am going to pull a card. And today's deck is the Starseed Oracle from Rebecca Campbell. As always, I am setting the intention that I'm going to pull a card that the audience needs to hear this week or will help the audience this week. And the card that I pulled is Child of the Cosmos. The intelligence of the universe lies within you. I get this card quite often, actually. This week I'm going to be reading from the book. It says, The card is Child of the Cosmos. The intelligence of the universe lies within you. There's a mysterious force that governs all of life. An intelligence that tells flowers when to bloom and tides and seasons when to come and go. That intelligence is within you, too. It is there before you drew your first breath. It will be there well beyond your last. It's the part of you that informed every cell what to do and when and where in your mother's room. It's harder to resist this force than it is to surrender to it. Because Earth is a planet of polarity and free will, it's easy to forget that this intelligence exists within us. So often we become disconnected from this pulse of life and fall into the pattern of believing that we're separate or feeling that we need to go it alone. We can be isolated and as if we need to figure things out for ourselves to rely on our own strength. You're being called to remember the intelligence and within each and every one of ourselves to remember that you are a precious child of a loving, gentle universe that you have access to all of the intelligence, wisdom, and strength, flow, and qualities there ever were, are, or will be. And to remember that if flowers know exactly when and how to bloom, then so do you. The Starseed Soul Inquiry. How can you surrender more deeply to the intelligent flow of life? When I first saw the card, The first thing I thought of was that we are more, we are more special than we let ourselves believe. We have been toning down and hiding who we are for our whole lives. We have been quiet when we needed to be loud. We have kind of sunken away and hidden in the shadows when we were meant to stand up and be seen. So for me, When I see this card, it feels like we need to step into our divine purpose. Our soul is divine. We have the light of the universe within us. We need to be more true to ourselves, be more true to our souls and not dim ourselves. This is something I've been working on a lot lately. I don't say lately. The last few years is being more true to myself, more authentic. But I feel the word that resonates with me more is true to myself and who I am and who I want to be. So for today's episode, I have my kitty sitting on my lap. So if you hear rustling, please forgive me. She sometimes likes to explore in here. So I'll go back to What happened a week and a half ago, I was having a healing session with somebody, one of my soul reading and healing sessions, 
and they had a big block in their heart related to a past life with their child and the fear of losing this child because in that life the child was lost. Um, and when I felt that energy, I felt it very strong within me. And that for me means that I have a similar issue, a similar block, similar cord, similar challenge. And this, I know for sure, this is with my oldest in this life. Anyways, and when I healed it, when I cut the cord and I released the blockage, I released it within myself, but the energy was so strong within me. It wasn't necessarily the client's energy. It was big and it did have a lot of energy behind it, but my own block, when it released, it the energy was quite, I mean, it feels like explosive. And I hurt my rib. It got bruised and I thought it was broken because it was really painful. It, I got an x-ray and it wasn't, so it was just a bruise. But here, a week and a half later, it's still bothering me, but it has improved. When this release happened, I didn't have the energetic protection in place to pre- for when my blockages are being released, I had the protection from the client's energy, the outside energy. I didn't have the protection from my own energy. So that was a big lesson for me for, for doing energy healing sessions, sessions. Because when I do a session, I have the intention that if I'm doing any healing on the client, that I need the same healing, the healing happens to me at the same time. I thought of it as a time-saving measure that, and an effort-saving measure so I don't have to do the healing on myself afterwards, after I feel that I have the same block. And a simple way to fix w- what this issue was for me going forward is to set the intention that when these blocks are being released and healed, that they happen gently, that they happen in a way that is for my highest good and is gentle to my body and soul. Because it was fast, it was effective, but it definitely uh, had its effect on me. It really caused me to slow down, which isn't bad because the universe always tells me that I need to slow down and enjoy my time instead of trying to rush through things. So it's kind of, they probably let it happen because I needed to learn that lesson too. But I have thought it would be really important for all of you to know, all of you that are healers, to be aware that if you set the intention for the healing to happen to yourself, that you need to have another layer of intention that states that it be gentle healing, that it be, yeah, that it be gentle healing. So that was interesting. Um, and I'm going to go into the records now and see what they have to say. Because honestly, I haven't gone into the records to, to see what they have said about this. This was just my intuition cluing me in to what my issue was and how to fix it in the future. So let's go in and see what suggestions the records have to say. Okay, so they're saying that we need to call in the unconditional love energy with each session to protect us, to guide us in a loving, gentle, protective manner. And we need to call upon the, I can hear specifically, unconditional love energy. And if we set that intention, then only... The beings and the only energy that is allowed to come through is of unconditional love, and that will protect us. 
see. And I hear the word fortress. So we are building this fortress around us when we're doing our healing so that other outside energies cannot come in and disturb us while we are doing our healing session. So I asked in the records, what can a healer do to help prevent this explosion of energy that can harm our physical bodies? And then I, what they showed me was creating a pod around us where the energy feels quite thick. It kind of reminds me of jello. So when the energy goes through it, it gets slowed down and we can process it a lot easier easier and it doesn't affect our physical bodies as much because our physical bodies are quite dense. It can't process the high vibrational energies as easily. Um, let me see. How can we, I'm, I'm asking, how can we make this bubble of energy that kind of slows it down like jello? And yeah, it's just what I thought. It's just, just intention. It's play, visualizing this I'm seeing it as blue, as blue gel surrounding us that absorbs and slows down the energy. And okay, so putting that as the base layer before all the other layers of protection before a session so that. Okay, so I'm just seeing so we have the the blue gel and then we have the white and pink love energy light around us in a ball and then we have the mirrored ball and then any type of geometry or colors or layers that we need afterwards and that will change depending on the session so you need to ask what do you need and you can get your layers of protection and the colors needed to protect your energy in that session and that's that's what they say will help prevent this issue in the future but they did have the caveat that we shouldn't be do using that blue gel when for all of our everyday activities. It's only when doing a healing because when you're doing everyday activities, if it feels like the energy around you that will go through almost gets trapped in the slow moving gel instead of being ricocheted off, even when you have the mirror around it, it's, it's not as effective. It's more effective for your reflective empathic energy doing your regular everyday things like going to the store. It's better to not have the blue gel in there. Only have the blue gel when you are doing a healing session, when you're working with energy. So if you're not an energy healer, there's no need to use the blue gel at all. So it's only for those healers out there. Okay. I just asked if there's anything else that the listeners need to hear right now. And they gave me this image of the world and all of these light workers standing all around the world like a grid. And each of the light workers is glowing with golden yellow light. The way our energy is working right now is we are connected to the grid, we are connected to the earth, we are connected to each other, and the more of us that turn on, the more of us that shine bright, the stronger the earth gets. So we need to shine as brightly as we can. It means stepping out of the shadows, stepping out of hiding. We need to be who we are meant to be. We, need, we are supposed to listen to our soul and follow that calling. We need to step out of the shadows and be who our souls are calling us to be. Be the light workers, be the healers, be the love, be the connection to each other. We need to follow our path in the sense that we need to follow our heart when we need to do what lights us up and makes us happy. We need to love each other unconditionally, shine our love and light on everybody. Because the only way that we can help the earth and help each other 
is to spread love everywhere. We need to open our heart chakras and shine our love so that we can use that light to light other people up. Okay. Well, thank you very much for listening today. If you have any questions, please visit my website, spruceenergyhealing.com. You can go on my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all Spruce Energy Healing. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week.